PW Hustle Networks present PWR at the Movies. Join the professor, Tommy Wonder, and JB as they discuss the greatest pro wrestling moments in movie history. Activity indicates severe stress. I don't need a monitor to know that. Just look at his eyes. Rems, he's dreaming. Tell you something else, that thing is growing. What about a hospital? Too dangerous to move him, and that thing might contaminate the hospital. Oh, well, we've got to do something. I'm going to try the laser. No! No, you can't do that. They've got to try. We'll try again. It's over. I'm okay. What? A robot? That's how he got his powers. He wasn't human. I am human. We should have guessed. Who built here? Nobody built me. They're just metal and wires. Lana, I'm alive. You're a robot! I can't be. Feelings. For you. Don't say that! Lana, please! Your circuits are malfunctioning, Superboy. You know you were good in your day, but it's time for you to be replaced. Replaced? By you? Correct. And my first official act as the new Superboy will be to dispose of you. No, I won't let you. It's like I said, my first official act as the new Superboy will be to dispose of you. No! The laser did nothing. Absolutely nothing. 
What's next? What's going on there, Reflection Nights? What is going on there to the big Vito Ice, the Hami Nights, the Reflection Nights, all the ice all over the world, the PWC Ice, the left, the right, the Dems, the Repubs, the Magnificent 70 Elite 8, the Naughty 9, the Terrific 10, the Essential 11, the Tubulous 12, the Thirsty 13, the Fabulous 14, the Fuckery 15, and all the Magnificent 7 members plus. I, I, I'm losing count, but, you know, there's going to be 16s, 17s, 18s. I'll leave it up to TW to get those nicknames for the 16s, the 17s, the 18s, the 19s, and the 20s. But neither here nor there. But it's been a long time, and it's been at the pole that we haven't gone to the movies. You know, I haven't eaten some popcorn. I haven't eaten, I haven't eaten some jujubes. I haven't had those junior mints. I haven't drank some sodas, some pop, some soda pops. Some fruit punch, some lemonade, and all that spiel. I need to get a heart attack very quick, and the best way to get a heart attack quick is to have movie food. I need to have that five-year-old hot dog. That you know, that one wiener that's been like laid. That code? No, 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 no. That's the, that's not the slide in the DMs code. No, 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 no. But neither here nor there. I need that hot dog wiener that's been laying there for five years, and I want to try that one with some mustard. Some relish, some onions, and all that stuff. If the guy just been hit on you for five years, you want see, to not, try it finally. Hell no. See, this, this, is, this is what it is, Reflection Nights. This man always has this this weird fascination. First of all, it's not me getting dick pics of Colonel Robert Parker. It's him. It's Travis Bowles sending it to him. <laughs> so now he's putting it all on me again. No, 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 no. But anyway, welcome and welcome to the PWR Podcast here at the Hami Media Group at Podbean.com. And I am your host. For this PWR at the movies, I am your movie director extraordinaire. I am the, I am the effervescent one. I am the astute, the astute one. I am the affluent one. I am the scholarly one. But most importantly, I am the glorious one. The only objective man in this IWC, YWC, PWC punditry. Your friend of mine, the Professor Chabelle Cruz. And I'm not here alone to watch this movie. Well, it's not really a movie. It's really, you know. It was a TV series, but we'll talk about it a little bit in a couple of minutes. But I need a movie partner. If I'm Cisco, this man is Ebert. If I am a, well, let's see, if I'm Spielberg, this is George Lucas and all that stuff. No, we're not pedophiles. I'm not talking about that. See, I know that he'll be like, no, we're not liberals and we're not pedophiles. We're not, we didn't go on Epstein's Island. You know, I mean, well, we did, but it, was a, but it was for the food. But this man is my brother from another mother. He's the conservative liberal, the liberal conservative, dumb dumb doing idiot soul, Mr. Wonderful, Dr. Frankenstein, the Iron Stomach One, the Tommy Wonder, how are you doing, my friend? I am you doing. Can... I, uh... You got the Christmas lights up already. What is wrong with you? See, hey, people Christmas. like you make... People like you make, you know, make me hate Christmas, man. Everybody putting up their Christmas decorations so goddamn early. The rules is after Thanksgiving, not anything before. I see, I see green, I see red, I see yellow or gold, whatever color that is. Those are Christmas lights. It was pomp and circumstance. It can be just white. Mm-hmm. If it was white, I wouldn't say nothing. I'd say you, you, you live in the high light. There it is. Mm-hmm. You live in the strobe light. You need a disco ball. That's what it is. But anyway, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing, man. I went and saw Duran Duran this past weekend. Oh, cool. Well, not when this airs. It'll be a week ago, but mm. the past weekend before is recording. It, is it still Duran Duran? Did it, you know, it's no new members, no no Duran Duran Jr.? It's four of the five, because I think the other one had health issues. He's all done. But the, but the funny thing is, is they're like balls deep, 65, 70 years old. Right? You, you got to understand, they're 20 in 1983. Mm-hmm. So that makes them what? 70? Yeah, that makes them... No, 60. Yeah. No. So they're 25 and 83. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But you know who opened for him? Who? Nile Rogers. From Chic. He's in his 60s or 70s himself. He's got 70s, man. And he uh, he did all right, man. He uh, They have two songs, two hits. 
mm-hmm. good times we all want. And uh, freak out. Uh, freak out. Freak out. Sashik. Sashik. Netflix. But they also sang all the songs he did for other people. He wrote about a lot of Diana Raw stuff. So it was a pretty good show. And then the opener was Bastille, who I wasn't really familiar with, but they were all right. Maybe that's a local Detroit, Michigan group? No, no, they're British. Oh. Okay. But today, mm-hmm. I looked up pre sale tickets for King George. For the people that don't listen to country music, that's George Strait. With mm-hmm. Chris Stapleton and uh, some boy girl band, Little Big Town. And the cheapest seat for the nosebleed of Ford Field was $155 US. And I promptly shut the thing down and said, I ain't going to see George Street. That's that's insane. And then that was only like a couple seats. And then they were two fifty five or three fifty five. So then but you're you know, in you, crush. You know what's Matt funny? Price. OK, I, I, it's funny you're talking about concerts right now and, and concert tickets. Now, before we go into the movie episode, we got to at least talk about this. You know, we haven't talked about it ourselves on this platform for the, you know, the, the 12 that ride strong. But, you know, AEW's all in happened in merry old England. And, you know, one person by the name of Tony Khan said there was a paid attendance of 81,035. But yet the turnstile numbers, a.k.a. the people that scan the tickets. I don't want to get into this again, T.W., because I know I'm right. I know what I'm talking about. I know the business that I'm in about turnstile numbers. But the turnstile numbers brought 10,000 less. It was like 72 and change. But you know what's funny? Because you went to Duran Duran. You, you know, Duran Duran, Niles Rogers. You know, I'm, I'm focusing on them. You went to the Little Caesars Arena, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, you know. We, you know, for the stadium, there was 10,000 no shows. And, you know, the philosophy is, would you, would no, would, unless somebody dies in your family, you're not going to pay hundreds of dollars, maybe even thousands of dollars on the resale market, right, TW, to miss what you physically pay for, what are out of your hard earned money. The only time you're not going anywhere, and I've done this myself, I don't go to like Nick games, I don't go to Brooklyn Net games, I might go, I might not even go to a concert I did not even want to go if it was given to me for free. Right. If I got the comp. So I don't feel like I'm cheating, I'm cheating myself because I didn't pay for shit. So right. TW, when you went to the Little Caesars Arena, how was the how was the uh, ambiance? How was the settings? Did, did was there no shows out of a, maybe a fifteen thousand seat arena? Was there five thousand no shows? The people that didn't want to see Duran Duran? No, that place was packed. I even took a picture of it and put it out there. But hey, let me tell you something: everyone that bought a ticket went. They went. It's mm-hmm. just one of them bought ten thousand tickets, and his name is Tony Khan, and he was there. <laughs> I'm, again, it's just funny. What's what's our buddy's name? Jeff Lipman? Lip, Lippman? How do you say it? Yeah, the doctor of WrestleNomics, Jeff Lipman. This dude said it best. Oh, yeah. 10,000 no-shows happens all the time. That, that's a, that is five times the average Dynamite total audience lately mm-hmm. of 2,500 or four times. That mm-hmm. It's insane. But here's, here's the other problem. I have no problem with them doing it. I have no problem with them if you bought tickets and plan on giving them away. Maybe they didn't give them away, just people didn't use them, right? Mm-hmm. Here's my problem. The same people who are saying, bullshit, they sold 81,000 tickets are the same ones who probably weren't even alive in 1987 who shit all over the 93,000 number for WrestleMania 3. Well, right? I'm not even comparing numbers. I'm just saying. No, no. What I'm saying is the people who say they didn't get 93,000 people, who did that, as a matter of fact, Going up to this show saying 80,000 is the most paid. That was their their way of saying, because it's not the biggest pay-per-view ever. It didn't mm. even sell the most pay-per-views, first of all. It's not the most attended event. Uh, obviously wasn't, because more people went to the Dallas WrestleMania. Because well, B- B- Bischoff, people... Bischoff still has the record, but no one wants to talk about communism like that. China, yeah, right. Yeah. So bottom line, I have no problem with them fudging the numbers, if you will. Or if, mm-hmm. or if they gave away tickets and people didn't show up. My problem is the fan base who defend all things AEW, shit on all things WWE, WWF. And mm-hmm. leading up to this, when someone said 81,000 is the record, 93,000 is, yeah, but paid. They didn't pay to see WrestleMania 3. And it wasn't even the highest gate 
SummerSlam just had the highest gate of just a SummerSlam, which was higher than anything they did. So it, it's to me, what's what's the saying? Eat crow. How do you like to eat your crow? And mm-hmm. it, 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 it's instead of if, if people didn't run around bragging about the eighty-one thousand, no one would be calling them out for the seventy-two thousand, right? Yeah, it but is. You what it open is. Pandora's box when you talk shit for two months, and then it turns out it was exactly that shit. Mm -hmm. The 71,000, 72,000, that's a good number, regardless. Absolutely, it it. is. I'm waiting for you to hook me up with a way to watch it, because I would watch it. I'd love to see it. I saw clips of Jericho uh, singing himself to the ring from behind it, Um, so Mm -hmm. I would love to see it. And instead of enjoying the moment, and instead of enjoying it, and again, yeah, it's the chicken and the egg. People are right now laughing at them. And pointing out the numbers for the collision and the dynamite for the the next foreseeable six weeks. And that wouldn't be happening, in my opinion, if that fan base wasn't so aggressive and condescending. Gung ho with with all the all this all the pomp and circumstance. But I just wanted to you was at a concert. Yeah. You you understand where I was coming from because you was at an ambiance. 10,000 nope. people do not know show. Even if yeah. even free tickets, 10,000. No, no. It's I'm a- just saying the, the, I'm giving the leeway, the only pass that someone would not go to an event because I've been one of those people. If I did not pay for it and if I got a comp, I don't feel bad that I missed out on something because I didn't pay for it physically myself. That's the point I'm trying to make. Can I ask you a and question? That- I thought of another loophole that might be there. What's would that? they divulge this information? Mm-hmm. First of all, I suppose he sold out in 10 minutes or whatever the hell it said. Two days, whatever. Is there a chance that those 10,000 no-shows were people who got buy one, get one free tickets, and they just didn't give the one free away? Could be. Who 10,000 is a lot. Yeah. There could have been two-for-ones, three-for-ones, or four-for-ones out, out of that package deal, but we don't know about it. And I'm not just getting into the numbers. You know, again, I just wanted to give the a little bit of nuance to a person who just went to a concert for the saying, like, you know, people do no-show from, from comps. No. No one misses a Taylor Swift concert. No. Nobody misses a Beyonce concert. Mine's Nobody it. misses a Metallica concert. Nobody misses a Rolling Stone concert. Nobody misses a Kiss concert. And I'm talking about stadiums. You don't miss those. So for wrestling, if you see some empty seats, you know what happened. Scalpers. So, you know, oh, you got to have, an, you gotta have an asterisk. Yeah, but see, I like that you say that. That might have been the case early on, but here's the thing with scalpers. Poison, Molly Crew, and, and uh, Def Leppard came last summer to Comerica Park. Mm-hmm. Not only did the seats sell out, to, including scalpers, but also regular fans, mm-hmm. the day of the show, I got this tattoo, and my plan was after I got my tattoo, I was going to go on StubHub or Quick Pick, Tick Pick, whatever the fuck, uh, mm-hmm. Vivid Seats. Those sold out, too. On the day of the event, they will sell tickets for less than they paid for them so they don't eat everything that they paid for them. There's no way 10,000 mm-hmm. people wouldn't have bought $5 tickets if they were blowing them out so they didn't eat it, right? So okay. I go with that. I, I, think, I think Tony Khan bought 10,000 tickets. I think he bought more than 10,000 tickets. I think he gave them away. And I think mm-hmm. 10,000 of those people, like you, who don't feel like they're shortchanging themselves, are like, you know what? I was going to go, but I don't want to deal with that traffic. I'm not going. I'll watch it at home. Yeah. Especially the seats. They didn't want to go up there. Right. They want to be down low. If it was down low, maybe you'd be making that decision. But again, neither here nor there. But I just wanted to give that little nuance. Thank you, TW, for that little, you know, let's say assessment of what your experience was to what happened with All In. Again, the PWR merges the past with the present. But... What SummerSlam was Bret Hart versus Bulldog? 92? 92. 92. And they had more people than AEW, technically. But, again, we're not doing that right now. We are now going back to the movies, Reflection Nights. And it's kind of funny because, mm-hmm. again, you know, TW, I like picking stuff that, you you know, you like. And you're, one of your favorite wrestlers, Mount Rushmore, whatever the case may be, is the total package Lex Luger. He's not on the Mount Rushmore. But he's but on he's, my Mount Rushmore. He's, no, he's on your Mount Rushmore. That's, yeah, he, that's, that's what I'm saying. But, but different I knew, Fernando, you, got, you was giddy when I, te- when I gave you this particular uh, 
PWR at the Movies episode. So the Reflection Nights, we are going back to 1990. And we are going to talk about a little show that actually I didn't watch because I was not into this show. And I'm a and I'm a comic freak, you could say to a degree. But it was The Adventures of Superboy. And I think this was on ABC, if I'm not mistaken. But this was season three TW. And this was in December of 1990. The Adventures of Superboy. And this episode is called Mindscape. But before we even talk about the episode and the and the things we saw here, TW, I just want to talk about the total package Lex Luger per se, because I found it kind of funny, maybe ironic a little bit, because you know what, TW, let's be real. Total package Lex Luger, 19, and I'm talking 19 naughty. I'm not talking now, or whatever the case may be, but 19 naughty. He had what Hollywood was looking for. He had movie star looks, free flowing blonde hair, you know, great chest. He had, you know, movie star looks. He could get the girl's panties moist. He, you know, every guy, you know, wants to be like him. Every girl wants to sleep with him. All that stuff. He had that. And I remember, you know, in the NWA glory days before it turned into WCW, remember like the Four Horsemen interviews? J.J. Dillon would say that Lex Luger is getting these deals from Hollywood for commercials and movie roles and TV roles and all the, and TV show roles and all this stuff. And it dawned on me when I saw this episode that Lex Luger only has, and I looked this up, Reflection Nights, and, and you can Google it yourself. He's only been on two TV shows. This one that we're going to talk about and Arliss in 1996 or 7. So Lex Luger, surprising enough, TW, never ventured into Hollywood. So it dawns on me to say this, but either Lex Luger really got bank from his wrestling days, you could say, with the, the people that represented him to get buku dollar contracts. You know what I mean? Like NWA, he got probably top tier main event, uh, a main event contract. In 1992, when he went to the WWE, he got a bankroll contract that he liked, that his people negotiated. And it, we could talk about, we don't have to talk about 1995 because when he went back to WCW, we, we know the story that Eric Bischoff Shortchanged them, but you, you, we, you and I know that probably his people did the incentive clauses so he could get his money back and he get the raises and all that stuff. So he's very shrewd. He's a very shrewd businessman, but it dawned on me that he probably made a lot more money than we even thought in the wrestling game, and he never really wanted to venture into what Hulk Hogan wanted to do. The Rock wanted to do. Batista wanted to do. Stone Cold and John. We can go on and on and on, but. Luger had to face. He could have been the, the top villain in a, in a Sylvester Stallone movie. Maybe he wanted to be the action star, but I don't know. But what say you, TW? Because it's kind of weird. He never ventured into something that you and I think he would have been perfect for. Well, there's, I got a lot to say about this. but Say it, say it all. He, say it all. He's my boy. He's my mm -hmm. boy. I met him as a kid at the autograph signing when he was on the Lex Express tour. One thing is, Probably just didn't want to do it. It's not for everybody. The the saying in Hollywood is hurry up and wait. You'll sit mm -hmm. somewhere for 12 hours and they'll use you for five minutes. So okay. think about it. He was on the Lex Express store for three days before he mm -hmm. told them, fuck this. I need a hotel. And they put him in the Marriott. That's that's not one of them dark side of the ring things where Bruce Pritchard's bitching about him not wanting to stay in that bus, which was top of the line bus. So I can imagine he wouldn't want to just sit around all day and do that. Secondly, not a very good actor even in wrestling he like <laughs> some of his promos are not that good if they're not scripted right like he i mean obviously if he reads the script maybe he's better but the the super you judging episode, are you judging everything from this episode we're going to talk about i'm also judging it from times when he goes out there to talk and he just bought just botches it right like okay he's got some good promos under his belt but he's got some <laughs> he's got some turds too right so but so, also, you're, so you're saying, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but you're saying from the wrestling side of it, where, you know, you got to have the gimmick and all in the character, maybe his promos, I would agree with you, were robotic, if you will. This episode so, that, that we that, watched, it's like watching Lex Luger do a promo. It, 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 you didn't feel like you were watching an actor. You felt like you were watching Lex Luger on WCW Saturday night. But right. the other thing is, and I hate to say this, and I, and I, I say it with good intent. 
But I, I think about him a lot, especially when you see him like he is and then you see how he is now. And you think there's lots of stories about him not being nice to people, not being, uh, you know, fun to be around or whatever, unless you were his friend, right? But, like, kind of cocky, kind of, like, get away from me type thing. And, you know, he had that look. He was, he was Goliath to David. And you just mm-hmm. wonder sometimes – was what happened to him to humble him because he ended up finding God and he's one of the most gracious people on the planet now, whereas I don't ever want to find out, but you or me, that shit happened to us. We'd probably be angry, right? We, we probably wouldn't be running around trying to inspire other people. People probably just wouldn't see us. We'd be holed up in our house and just, just waiting for the reaper, right? Because it's, it's significant, the difference in him now. And it ain't that he got old. It was, a light switch. He was the Adonis and then he wasn't. And mm-hmm. he's, he's grateful to be alive. He's grateful for the life he has. And so maybe he didn't get Hollywood stuff because nobody wanted him around. And, and the okay. other thing is I, I no one's ever going to doubt the rock John Cena or Hulk Hogan's ambition. I don't know that Luger has the same ambition. I, I can go with that thing either. I- that too. I mean, Sting did a couple of, you know, he did a couple of things too. We, we might have to do another Thunder in Paradise episode, but again, neither here nor there. But it just dawned on me because when I looked at the list and just seeing only two kind of like 30 minute shows, that's all he did. He didn't do anything else. It was just. He did commercials. He was in the Kangaroo commercial. No, no. But the, mo- the most TV he probably ever did was during 92 to 95. And that's with WWF. WWF, you know, you got to do the PR machine. Like you said, he did the Lex Express, but it was still a PR machine with radio interviews, trade shows, TV, you know, good morning shows, vignettes from coast to coast, vignettes and shit like that. So he was doing certain things in that nature of the WWE with with acting per se. Was he good? Again, he's a little robotic. You and I can agree with that set assessment on that. But the look was there. That's why I'm just saying he could have been Terminator. Being that robotic, he should have been the next Terminator. He should have been one of the the newest like T1000. But he was robotic. You're right. Uh, one little caveat to our earlier conversation, just to put into perspective this 10,000 disappearing. Oh, we're, go- we're going backwards now. <laughs> Paid attendance for SummerSlam '92 is 79,346. There you go. And Actual they had attendance. It. 79,127. So that means 119 people didn't show up. That seems like a right number. That seems like a right range. Compared of to 10,000. There you go. So, again, good. But, uh, Google according is to WWE, 80,355. So they jacked it up 1,005, which could be production and workers mm-hmm. and everyone else. In the building were eighty thousand three hundred and sixty-five people. So mm-hmm. it's 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 a hard pill to swallow that ten thousand people didn't show up. A- again, numbers don't lie. But let's get back. Now we can talk about this episode that we, you and I, saw for PWR at the movies: The Adventures of Superboy. The episode, season three, episode ten, called Mindscape. Oh, before we even go into this, TW, I want to say this because. The the date of this episode that that it aired, it's kind of funny too because wrestling wise, now I understand something. This episode premiered Reflection Nights December eighth, nineteen naughty TW. So you know some people were perplexed as to why Lex Luger lost the United States Heavyweight Title at Halloween Havoc towards to stand Lan- to stand the Lariat Hanson. So now with well, whatever I don't care about the booking, but Losing Bull the title, yeah, but losing the title TW at Halloween Havoc, and then the 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 episode premiering on December eighth, nineteen naughty, it uh, you can understand why he lost the United States title. They wanted to take the title off of him, so this way, and injured, you know, Stan Hansen kind of like storyline injured him a little bit, so he could get off of TV and film his little robotic scene, even though you know took a couple of weeks, so he took a couple of weeks off. Now I understand because you know when you're a kid, it's like, why did he lose? I was getting to that point, like Stan Hansen? He loses right. to Stan Hansen? I mean, TW, did, did did you put one and one together there? I dude, I at some point in my life I knew he was on so Superboy. I don't know that it was then. 
Oh, okay. Well, I, I didn't know. see it until today when I watched it this morning. <laughs> Again, I never watched Superboy even in 1990. You know, I'll say this because I, I love Christopher Reeve and I love the Superman movies, but that did not make me want to watch Superboy because I like Superman. I thought Superboy was just stupid. I thought it was it was for Sesame Street. You're getting I there. Was, You're coming close. You're coming but close. again, Come I liked. Do not go there. Do not go there. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did not say it like that. I said I like Superman with Christopher Reeve. I like those movies. And <clears throat> excuse me. And from the from nineteen, what was it, seventy eight when Superman one appeared to nineteen eighty eight when it was Superman four, the quest for peace. This the popularity of Superman was waning down. So they had to pivot. Was it 88? I thought it was 84 was the last Superman. No, it was 88. 84. So right before 80, Batman? 80, 83, 84 was the piss poor Superman 3 with Richard Pryor. That was one of the worst. Everybody said that was the worst Superman well, movie. Well, 4 is worse. 4 was decent. 4, four is like a cult hit if you smoke weed. Lex Luger could have been the bad guy in 4. There you go. That's what I was going to say. But now let's get into this. Episodic, well, not episodic. Well, it is episodic in terms of the adventures of Superboy. But the problem, I, there's a lot of nuance here that I had a problem with. T.W. I just want to say this, but let's talk about the cast of characters here because we got Gerard Christopher who plays the lead role, Clark Kent, a and Superboy. I have a problem here. I, I have no problem with Superboy because in DC Comics they had, a, you know, the Superboy lineage, you know comic books series i know that but the, the the funny thing i had with with this is because gerard christopher doesn't look like a superboy he does look like a young superman yeah number one number two you, so you're into him he look he's i think he's supposed to be 19 but he looks like he's 29 that's that's problem number two looking like that so i have that issue here and number three superman you know from from what I remember, he graduated from Smallville High School and then went to Metropolis to become the reporter. Never in my never in my history I remember him going to college. I don't remember him going to Smallville College. And he was in this small. I, I'm, I'm assuming it's called Smallville College. But the way it looked, the um, the obvious reflection lights look like it's the Daily Planet. But no, they're all in the X Files department. It was the extra paranormal uh, department of the of this college, TW. So, like, this nuance of sh this was a multiverse shit that I was like, what the fuck is this shit? What's say he you never about worked with Lana Lang. Lang? Well, Lana, that, that's okay that he, he did have a crush with his, that's his high school, you know, No, no, crush. no, but he didn't work with her. They basically made Lana Lois. Right. And she's not. Again, that was his high school crush. So it, it kind of moved on. Again, it's hard to tell if this is college or this is his this is his first job. That's one of the nuances that I had trouble with. But this the the League of Extra Paranormal Department looks like a Daily Planet. You had your Perry White. You had your you know well the black guy was like a Jimmy Olsen. He was like mentally. And of course the love interest is Lana Lang of Reflectionites. But Here's the, here's the funny part. And then you get this Hick, Joe Bob Hick Bob, whatever you want to call him. He comes in with a bucket saying that I found a I found something that, that just crash landed on Earth. And you guys are the right department. TW, I had another problem with this because of like a, you could say a medical code, you know, all, you know, all the emergency, you know, codes that you're supposed to follow it especially with like you know 9 11 and the pandemic and all the shit everybody failed with what was going on here the fucking meteor whatever it was crash landed he had it in a bucket then some guy hit him from behind and then the meteor dropped uh, flipped out of his bucket and hit the ground now hit now uh, reflectionites you know the funny thing about people not knowing that Clark Kent and Superman are the same people is the way that he just conveniently walked to the back, turned to the right, nobody's there, nobody's around, and then just turn and does his Michael Jackson <laughs> and then turns <laughs> and turns into Superman so quickly. No people are there. Then he just comes back in and looks at the media. What say you about you know the little nuances of shit that's like maybe if I'm like 13. What what was that? Yeah, I was 13 years old. I could actually pass. I could actually say it looks stupid, but I I'll give it a pass. But at my at my tender age of 46, TW, I'm like, this shit is ridiculous. And it's not even about the storyline. It's just about 
just common sense. It just all looks stupid. What's ATW about? At least the first five the minutes. The second he ran around the corner and did the nutcracker silhouette spin and became, I was like, first of all, at least show a janitor sweeping and stop and make it funny, right? Like, what the hell? right. And and he could have not saw Clark, but saw the spin, and then was like, "Oh, mm -hmm. Superman, never mind." It could have been like a sweeping. tornado. He th the janitor thought it was a tornado or something right. before he even so realizes it. That the Lana working with him, the, their X Files. You know what show I also didn't watch? What was that Smallville? For the mm -hmm. same reason. First of all, it was. The first time I tried to watch it, because I was excited for it, mm -hmm. they're in a diner, which is cool, because all my Superman comics were from the 50s and 60s, where people were at the, diner, the malt shop, right? Right. They're at the malt shop, and what's playing on the radio? No Doubt. No Doubt oh, yeah. was not around in 1950s. So stop making it look like the 50s. And then having no doubt playing. Wait, wait a minute, the, the you mean overhead. in the diner they were playing? Don't speak. I it knew wasn't that song, but it was oh, okay. spinning with the spider web, whatever the hell it was. And if I'm gonna go back and watch it, if it is that song, that's great memory time. But but that once they did that, I was like, I'm out. And then other my some of my other friends were like, dude, you're missing it. It's a great show. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, his best friend is Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor was never in Smallville ever. And then. Every bad guy he ever fought somehow made their way through Smallville before he even got to Metropolis, which is where he really met them all. But my question mm -hmm. is, why would these guys see him in Smallville and then see him in Metropolis and not figure out they also saw Clark Kent in Smallville and Metropolis? I just I hate when they go into business for themselves and just make, if you want to make it no doubt era, comic books do it all the time. They reboot. And it's now right. modern Spider Boy. You know, he's still Spider Man, but he's younger. Otherwise, he'd be eighty. Just like <laughs> wrestling, you have to suspend disbelief. So you have but to go. But with, make it a modern with, diner. Don't make it a damn sixties malt shop. And then play No Doubt. It's funny. I did. I never saw Smallville myself. And because eighty-eight. Again, I, eighty-eight is when this show started. So ninety-one is ep season three. By the way, how how did they make it a season three? I watch shows that get canceled. There are eight episodes, like Undeclared, that are remember, glorious. Remember, ratings were different, and this was yeah. on ABC, so it, it had no pressure. That was I on ABC? Was, that wasn't yeah, on WB? I, no, this was on ABC. This was probably Thursday or Friday, like uh, like 10 o'clock, so it was a, at a safe point, and then they were the lead into 2020. I remember this vividly. So, so 9 o'clock, because 2020 yeah. was 10. Yeah, give, so or, give or take, but there again. There phone booths, my point is. There were phone booths in 91. Use mm -hmm. the same damn one every time if you need to, if you don't want to keep finding phone booths. But there were phone booths he could have went into and came out of Superman. For for any Superman Reflection Night comic book readers, I know you might try to correct me and TW saying this. We're just going off what we're seeing. Again, you might tell us, well, in the comic books, it's actually, it makes sense if you read the comic books to a T. That's the difference. We're not AEW hardcore comic book readers. So we might have not known this. But I'm looking at what I remember from Christopher Reeve to this. I'm like, this don't make no fucking sense. But anyway, neither here nor there. But Superman comes in and he touches the meter, right? It explodes in his face. And this green pus just, you know, attaches itself on Superman. So Superman. And again, the funniest thing is like, again, the, I get a little nuancey here because now I'm going into more of, of today. Superman died. Fighting apocalypse reflectionites. Superman is and having came back. <laughs> right. And Superman is having trouble with green pus. I did not like oh, I'm sorry, not Superman. Superboy is having trouble with green pus. We don't know if it's kryptonite. It's not even mentioned. It's just green pus, TW. So that's another problem I had with it. It's the little nuances. But again, neither here nor there. Now he falls back and he goes into dreamland, reflectionites. So this green pus is trying to not only merge with him, it's trying to take over its body. So in the, in the instance of this 30-minute show, TW, he has three dream sequences. The first dream sequence is he actually re – it actually looks like a back to the future kind of dream because he saves everybody from the meteorite exploding. But on top of that, his secret comes out. And then it, it, I guess it fucks with his emotions and it fucks with his mind because one of the things that's that Superboy, a.k.a. Clark Kent, doesn't like 
is he likes that he can separate being Superboy and saving the world, TW, and then being Clark Kent and a private guy. What say you about the first three sequence where he is found out in, in front of his X-Files laboratory room that he is Superboy and everybody's now treating him a little bit differently. But, you know, they're treating him like a like a Hollywood celebrity. They're treating him like, oh, like he's a king. And he knows that these are fake friends now. What say you? I like that Lana was happy that he was Superman, not mad at him for not telling her he was Superman, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you tell me? Now we can be together, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then she starts healing on Clark. <laughs> like you said, fake friends. Clark's mm -hmm. a nerd. Why would you want to be Clark? Because he said, I need to be Clark. So I like that she wasn't mad that he didn't tell her, but I also didn't like that she started healing on Clark. Because that's the thing about Clark. With Lois, with Lana, with anybody in any version of Superboy or Superman, Clark Kent is loved by everyone, but he's friend zoned by everybody except for mm -hmm. Lana. Lana's right. the one that didn't friend zone him. She she was down for Clark because mm -hmm. she was a single mom. That's why we know how that works. Right. Um, but Clark was the original simp. At that yeah. word, he he you know he's the wimp simp. So yeah, you need to hear that. Go ahead, T.W. But yeah, and 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 I like like. You talk about nuances. I like what Clark did right away before he realized his shirt was damaged. Mm -hmm. Was when he jumped on it and it blew up and he didn't die. And everyone's looking like, what the hell, Clark? And then he's playing stupid and clumsy like like our good man Christopher Reese. Mm -hmm. And he says, I don't even know how I did it. I just reacted and jumped on it. And then everyone's staring at his shirt. So I think that was well done. But mm -hmm. I, again, had issues with her healing on Clark versus just being like, it, I love both of you. This is perfect. It, it, it's great that you said that that Gerard actually paid homage to Christopher Reeve the way that Christopher Reeve did that in Superman 2, where he, you know, I don't know what happened. You know, he I think it was the 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 fireplace log thing. Oh, you know, but he was trying to act like the normal human being. But then, you know, you can't escape the secret that he was Superman. And Gerard did the same thing. So I actually like that. But the second dream sequence is funny. And actually, it pertains to what you and I do for the PWR. You and I do for the PWR at the movies. This is technically the main event <laughs> for the PWR movies here. Because dream sequence number two, Reflection Nights, is he's getting deeper into his emotions. But now, you want to talk about nuance, TW, and, and shit that don't make sense. Well, now we figure out in dream sequence number two, well, actually Clark and AKA Superboy finds out that he's an Android. He's cybernetic organisms because they show his chest that he's all robotic and he, you know, all animatronics and all this stuff. And then you hear a voice coming up from the stairs and it's your friend of mine, the total package Lex Luger. And here's the problem I have reflection nights with total package Lex Luger being called Superboy. Total Package is 80s. in his 30s. <laughs> Total Package is not a Superboy. He is a Superman. He's fucking 30 something in 1990, TW. We know this. He already played in the CFL, the, the, the Canadian Football League, the USFL. He's already in his 30s. He's already, you know, did his thing. You probably will Google how old was he in I 1990. Am. <laughs> but he's not Superboy, Reflection Nights. He's Superman. He actually looks like Nuclear Man that T.W. was talking about from Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. He would have been perfect for that shit. But he 33. Thank you. Okay, he was 30. I know I wasn't crazy. He was in his 30s, so he cannot be Superboy. I'm sorry. He can't, he can't do it. It's not, it's not in his resume. He's Superman, T.W. But he is telling Christopher Gerard that his, since he's going to be the new Superboy, he must eliminate the original which is Christopher Gerard and TW want to take over because I, I want to say one thing because we'll talk about the, the, the finale with the dream sequences, but the fighting scenes actually were horrific, horrendous. You know, it, it reminded me like Star Wars, you know, episode four where uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi fought Vader and that fight actually looked stupid. But then you had to do the prequels where Obi-Wan and, and, Vader fought each other, and that was great where they fought in Mustafar and shit like that. When he was younger, he was younger. When, he was, when he was younger, but these fight sequences, 
I just wish that there were CGI. I just wish there were stunt doubles. I wish it was like Jean-Claude Van Damme as a stunt double, whatever. But what say you about the dream sequence number two? What say you about Lex Luger's acting abilities? And what was, say you about the fight fine scene? If you're a wrestling fan, because he was Lex Luger the wrestler. But the problem I have is that, A, just opposite of the first dream where they embrace him because they're like, Clark, Superman, that's awesome. This mm -hmm. one, they don't know it's Clark. It's still Superman. But he's robotic, and they all turn on him, right? Like, and then Luger comes down. And he's like, "Yep." And my first official act as the new Superboy, I am going to get rid of you, and everyone's fine with it. It's like, what? That would be what a villain would say. As I'm getting rid of you, and, then and, and then Lana's getting new up. and and Lana's getting new dick because she was embracing Lex right. Luger as the new Superboy, and and then. Luger rips out his insides. He's in denial. Like, so it's like you with the DMs. He's in denial that he's a robot. Mm -hmm. And then he blows up. And in the blowing up scene, his head went flying off. And then the next scene is him laying on the floor with the lower body missing. The, uh, the, the lower part of his upper body was wires. He still doesn't get it. And then he looks down and goes, what, what, uh? And he's telling Lois whatever, and she heals on him. And it, it's the exact same scene for the next dream where she's talking to Clark. Or not mm -hmm. Clark, but Clark comes in. But mm -hmm. it's horrible. It, that was CGI, buddy. It was 1991 CGI. And, oh, boy, was it bad. Well, the, the ending of his lower extremities and, the, and, the, and his upper extremities, yes, that was CGI. But the fighting scene was horrific. You, you would figure... That you have Lex Luger as your guest star coming in with all the pomp and circumstances. Again, he did, he did a good the, punch. Well, again, I'm just saying, but you you're we're in the boom period. And what is that? Oh, Lex Luger. Yeah, that's what he looks like now. God bless him. But 65. 65. Well, you know, every day is a blessing. That's all I would say. But anyway, you would you would think with all the pomp and circumstances, and we're still in this kind of wrestling boom, thanks to the WWF with the rock and wrestling, and you know. Getting it to mainstream, Luger. It, the funny thing before we even finish this episode, because actually this is all we can really talk about with Lex Luger. But I'll I'll try to put a bow on the other stuff. But did you do you remember WCW Saturday Night or WCW Main Event saying, "Don't forget to tune in to your local affiliates to watch the Adventures of Superboy, where Lex Luger guest stars." This coming like Thursday or Friday. I don't remember that. And I had cable. You just said time. why. It was on ABC. They're not gonna promote ABC. They were they were TBS. But just to say just to say he's gonna be there. I right. don't even remember them even promoting that's, that he was gonna be there. That's, that's why I'm telling you, I would have watched this shit if I knew he was on it, especially in ninety one. Mm hmm Well, it was nineteen naughty, but right, 90, was, yeah. was was Jim Hurd that vindictive to not promote his wrestlers? You know, that's marketing. That The WWE machine would have reminded you week in and week out that your favorite wrestler is on XYZ show. Of course, they promoted Jesse Ventura and the Predator shit. They promoted Hulk Hogan's No Holds Barred. You would think that Jim Hurd would say, remind Jim Ross, talk about Avengers of Superboy. It's fucking 30 minutes. It's one fucking fight, but at least you can have it. Yeah, I understand the like the, the whole the, the, purpose of letting him do it is to put eyes on him to get eyes on the product. Right. And then he doesn't promote it. Well, you know what? They might have that same mental philosophy of, well, our fans are going to watch their show. Their fans aren't going to watch ours. And remember, we did a PWR at the movies with learning the ropes. I don't remember any promotion. Well, I didn't have cable. That I remember. Stuff. They, they they promoted the shit out of oh, that. They, okay, they promoted the because shit out of Dr. that. Because Dr. Death Steve Williams was Lyle Elzado under the mask. Like, oh, okay. So. Dr. Death, and they talked about that. The Road gotcha. Warriors were on there. I right. want to say Luger was on there too. I think uh, he was supposed to be. I think he was supposed to be on there, maybe, but I don't. I think he might have pulled out or something like that. But neither here nor there. But but you corrected me. Thank you for that. But at least they promoted one thing. But they didn't promote. Their top star in 1990. He's the number two. You could say he's the number two babyface behind Sting at the at that moment because in 99, 1990, he was one of the top babyfaces right behind Sting. So your top babyface is on Superboy. I'm just saying that TW. You know, it's is it just 90? Is it 90 when the Robocop tie-in was where Sting got hurt? Yeah, he, he's, he's Capital Combat the title. Yeah, yeah, he, he Capital was... Combat and the, and the, and that Robocop crossover uh, promotion. All that stuff, Jim Hurd drops the boat, 
drop drops the the ball so to speak on both instances so let's put a bow on this superman episode tw because again looks luger is really all we want to talk about but right superman was fighting his emotions this green glob i forgot what what, what was those that, that slime toy what was it called you remember those slime toys that you opened the jar just just slime. like it was called slime did it have a name i forget the name i thought it had like a a, a catchy name it wasn't just slime it wasn't like nickelodeon can't do that on tv slime it was just slime. Oh, okay we'll, we'll we'll call it the nickelodeon you can't do it on tv slime but this slime was trying to take over clark's emotions and try to you know get his fears going because this entity wanted to take over his body and control it and at one point this entity killed clark kent and superboy at the same time but it took because well the third dream sequence i'll just say this quickly was S superboy was looking at in in the mirror because clark kent lana lang is 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 the biggest heel in this episode because superman fears a lot about his relationship with lana lang and lana lang looked like a gold digger a slut and you know somebody vindictive all rolled up into one in these dreams because that you know, Superman has fears about his relationships with Lana Lang. That's really what it right. looked like to me. So in essence, it all boils down into where he, quote unquote, dies. And he needed a pep talk by his Kryptonian parents. Uh, well, his name is Kal-El. I forgot uh, fucking his parents' names. But neither here nor there. Jor-El. You know jor -El. There you go. It was Jor-El that was giving him. It was jor that was giving uh, Superboy a pep talk. And Superboy turned into Popeye and just beat the shit out of this, this slime alien, TW. They look like, like sloth from Goonies. No, he looked like Top he looked like Avenger. a broke at he no, he looked like a bootleg swamp thing. That's what the, that that yeah, fight that's, sequence that's the same as the the Toxic Avenger. It looks like Swamp Thing got sludge thrown on the top of him. Also, he looked like Jason Voorhees unmasked in like Friday the thirteenth part three. Yeah. It was horrible. But every everybody like this was a recyclable like six foot ten looking dude in a bad costume. But the fight sequence was actually the Luger Superboy fight scene was better than this fight scene because this only lasted like fifteen seconds and with Superboy with one punch kills off the entity and the entity like melts away from his body and he wakes up and everybody goes home happy. The you know it was the ultimate payoff. It was like a WWF. WrestleMania TW. So what say you? Let's put a bow on this Superboy episode, season three, Mindscape. I guess, again, the funny thing is, for the wrestling bubble, nobody knew this. You didn't know that he was on it in 1990. I didn't care about Superboy anyway. So, but if I knew, I was watching it on WCW Saturday night, every, every Saturday at 6.05, if you told me, I actually would have just click the channel on Thursday to go on ABC or just try to find it on my TV guy. Look, I understand what you talk about with the logistics. I, I would have looked on my TV guy, where's Superboy and what channel I find it myself. But at least tell me. I'm a wrestling fan. I want to support my wrestling brethren. So put a bow on this Superboy episode in your humble opinion. So this, this last dream sequence we talked about how he died both as Clark and whatever and we mm -hmm. forgot to talk about how the second life force showed up on there because the thing was turning into something in his body. Mm -hmm. um, this is the one where they were trying to win him the uh, Tony Award or whatever the TV shows get. <laughs> uh, he's crying. This is this is not an Emmy. This was, was not a, this was this was not an Emmy winning performance. I'm sorry. No, but he was crying in his coma, and mm -hmm. he's crying because we're supposed to believe. That Lana Lang is gonna break up with Superman because that's that's how the Clark came in there, and then mm -hmm. Clark whoops his ass. He's just like a, everyone that wanted to fight him. He was a patsy and got his ass whooped, except for talking to his parents. He said, "But I want to meet you." Nope, it's not your turn yet. When it's your turn, we'll be here waiting for you. It was horrible acting. Then he all of a sudden hulks up and does like the spear to the mm -hmm. guy, and then fights him and then kicks out. When everyone's sad and crying, thinking he was dead, and he came back to life. And then also, let's not forget, while he's laying there and this thing's growing on him, they put mm -hmm. those little things on the side of his head for brain yeah. patterns. But it was supposed to be his heart rate. 
It's mm-hmm. just it's it's hokey in every which way. I can't believe it made three seasons. I absolutely understand why I didn't watch it because there's no. I am gonna go back and find episode one, and I'm gonna watch this shit until I can't, and that's probably gonna be four you, minutes you, in. The link I gave you has just go yeah. from season one to season three. So go ahead, and enjoy all of them that you wanted. So it, for the wrestling, oh but let's put a bow on this for the wrestling bubble. Tw, what say you? Because was it a lost opportunity from the from WCW Jim Hurd itself not to promote this or not to let their stars their top, not to let their top stars venture out and try to cross promote between them because again like you said Capital Combat they only did the promotion of the movie but it was not like Sting was in RoboCop 2 I remember that vividly no nope, WCW well, that was in more of a sponsorship. They probably yeah, paid it was a, it was a sponsorship. But you get yeah. where I'm going with this. Vince yeah. McMahon wants to put your wrestler in the movie Dude, or in the TV name show. It, name an appearance by a WWE wrestler in anything, and they told you about it. When Adam Adam when Edge did the Highlander Endgame movie, they told you about it. He's in it for thirty seconds. Well, it's probably about three minutes, but they promoted it. They're like, hey. Superstar Edge, Adam Edge Copeland is in the Highlander Endgame movie coming out in the movies. And they, I'm sure Highlander paid him, but mm. they made sure to let you know Edge was in it. Otherwise, they would just tell you, go see Highlander and let him be an right. Easter egg. And if somebody was on Punky Brewster, they told you. If somebody was on MTV handing out an award, they told you. They told you anything and everything that someone was going to be on it. Now, it's hindsight, but but... After this airs, it'll be two SmackDowns ago. They talked about The Rock being in Colorado on Game Day Live, and then he was there at SmackDown. So they talked about it after the fact. Um, mm-hmm. But that that's not a contracted guy. But they still referenced him being on that show. Why? Because the fans here, they're like, holy shit, he was on Game Day Live? That's awesome. And, and, and you they can go would, back. You, they you even can go back and watch you it. CM Punk on that damn After Raw show. On USA Network. I think it was USA Network. Probably, yeah. Well, they might not have said his name, but they showed you him. Like, tune mm-hmm. in after the show ends. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you, oh the, the CM Punk. Oh, that was Fox. That was uh, FS1. Fox. They, they yeah. told you he was on that show. Yeah. It's one of the hosts. They didn't say, welcome back, CM Punk. But they told you about it. They want mm-hmm. you to put anything. They put anything into. They want you to put your eyes on it. And, right. dude, every day... We find out a little bit more why WCW didn't make it because of decisions like that and stuff mm-hmm. like that and ridiculing WWE for being a circus and a soap opera and then trying to be it themselves. I still to this day, as long as I live, will never get over the Bulldog and Sting versus Sid and Vader and all those vignettes on the beach where the boat blew up. And it was a mm-hmm. fucking episode of Baywatch, it was, but it was on right. wrestling. It was it was it was horrible. They they they. They were late to the party, and then they didn't even have the right people to plan the party. And this is just, it might be nothing to most people, but you're, like you said, your top star in 1990 is Lex Luger and Sting. And Luger was carrying them from February to July when Sting came back because Sting was hurt. And mm-hmm. then you just fucking sandbag him, make him lose his belt. So I don't think it took two months to film this damn scene. You know, no, but you understand with the storyline, right. like Stan Hansen injured him he a little bit. He could have won the match and been injured and then made it back. No, he, 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 lost, he, he lost the no, title no, no, no. Havoc. I'm saying if they don't shit on this man, he mm-hmm. retains the belt but gets injured to go make the show and then comes you, back you before do, his 30 days are up. Yeah, you, you could do that. But at, at least I was like, damn, now it makes sense why he lost the title at Havoc. But it also so makes take- sense why he left and why all those guys left. Because <laughs> well, that treated like a second class citizen there, man. Those people Again. running it, Jim Hurds and and the, I can't remember the other guy was another one. They are not wrestling people. And mm-hmm. when you don't have wrestling people on there, they're gonna say yes to anything and no to anything that's gonna offend somebody. That's it. That's their criteria. They're not gonna say they're not gonna have if they're, they don't have a vested interest like Vince does. If this doesn't mm-hmm. work, I don't eat is his philosophy. And they look at it like, oh, this is just a loss leader. We'll just put it in the loss column. So let's put a little bit of a what if spin, TW, and then we'll right. close it out, okay? Let's say what if you was Lex Luger's agent, right? right. And you want to get him some roles. 
in 1990? What would have been the perfect role that you would try to have gotten Lex Luger? Besides giving getting him acting lessons, we know that part first. I understand that, but let's say from 1990 purposes or that that decade, you could say maybe late 80s, early 90s. What show or what he, movie would have been? One thousand percent should have been on Baywatch, walking on the beach in one of those red shorts with a surfboard okay. or a fucking the little red buoy thing they carried around. He should have mm -hmm. done that. He sh any action show that was on TV at the time, he he should have been either a villain or maybe a bodyguard to some celebrity. And then he ends up helping the hunter save the day him and mm -hmm. hunters protect the Hollywood starlet. Um, right. And any of that stuff, if it was today, like, like for example, fuck today, I, I would say he should be in the expendables in every one of them movies. Then he should have been in predator. He should have been in commando. He should have any Schwarzenegger movie. He should have mm -hmm. been the heel. That's so why I say that, he should have. He should have been one of the, the villain terminators that Arnold yeah, Schwarzenegger was trying to yeah, beat. So he would have been 100%. perfect because he did not have to act like that. Or so, He Man, okay. the motherfucker looked like He Man. Ooh. He should have been He Man, not Dolph Lundgren. You, but that movie was so horrible. It, that would have been an embarrassment even for Luger. But well, it would fit right in based off Superboy. <laughs> and with that being said, reflection nice. We close on this. Short edition of the PWR at the movies. You know, we rambled a little bit, but we're having fun with it because Lex Luger in his in that in that Superboy costume, being 33 years old, he's not Superboy. 32, because I thought it was 91. It was 90. Okay, he's 32 years old. He's not Superboy. He's a Superman. And they didn't call him that. So that was the funniest thing. But anyway, we're having fun with this. We but didn't man so mention one ironic thing. What was that? His name is Lex Luger, and he was Lu Superboy, not Lex Luthor. They didn't say his name. They just said, I'm the new I, Superboy. I know, but I'm uh, saying the irony mm -hmm. that Lex Luger in real life does go on a show, and instead of being Lex Luthor, which would have been hilarious, he was mm -hmm. Lex, he was Superboy. He was Superboy. You know, that, that was the fault of the production people, because he could have been in three dream se sequences. One, he could have been the Superboy ripoff. One, since his name is Lex Luger, you right. could have called him Lex Luthor. And, and he could have been that thing, the fucking bad guy at the end. And he could have he wore the tailor made suit, so he could have he could have passed off as Lex Luthor. So again, missed opportunities from not only from WCW but from the Superboy pr production people. But anyway, we close on this PWR at the movies especial TW. So you know, you know what? I think it's time we take a little bit of a week break. You know, we 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 stroll along, we we stroll along here. I think you deserve a little bit of week's vacation. I deserve a little week's vacation. And we'll be coming back in two weeks. And you know what, what we'll do in two weeks? I don't know. We'll might do episodics. You know, Big Ray Hernandez. You know what we gotta do. Yeah, you I know. <laughs> I know what we gotta do. So that's why, you know what? That's why I need to take a vacation and make <laughs> Big Ray wait a little bit longer for that. See, you want to go on strike? Okay, well, we'll go on vacation. So we'll make it think about it. We'll make it stress a little bit. We'll, we'll, but you know what, Ray? I promise you, when we come back out from our vacation, we will do your episodic that you've been asking us for the last, what, two, three months? I don't know. But anyway. He got so, mad when he saw we were doing Luger. I know. I don't understand. You know, again, <laughs> I do this for the reflection. I do it for the people. Ray, I give, I've given you everything. But give us give us a little peace of mind. But we're going to take a vacation. We're the back very in first person to slide in your DMs. You gave it to him. All right. Shut the hell up. But anyway, we'll be back in two weeks. And we'll go episodic. And probably, if I'm in, in a good mood, I'll give Big Ray what he wants. Don't say anything. So, TW, give out those socials so we can get out of here. Alrighty, The Pro Wrestling Coalition Network sponsors us at PWC Network at Podbean.com. Hami Media Group at Podbean.com as well. And they're also at ChannelAttitude.com. Our Twitter handle is at PW Reflection. Uh, Big Ray, as we talk about every time, every single social media outlet he's on it, whether it's TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, X, uh, what's that thing from Instagram called? Circles or something? Uh, threads. Threads, yeah. Circles. Mm -hmm. So Facebook, Twitter, all of it. He is at Big Ray Hernandez, and you can find him every Wednesday on the Next Level podcast. And then you can find me at Tommy Wonder 19 on my heel Twitter X, 
as well as my Instagram uh, at the Tommy Wonder for my TikTok and my face uh, X. Uh, Snapchat is number wonder, Facebook.com backslash Tommy Wonder, and also that Tommy Wonder 19 is my threads. Uh, which, by the way, side note, I got suspended on X yesterday because I watched a video of two savages who had stole a car and ran a biker over and killed him and videotaped it. And when the person Uh-oh. posted it, they said, "What is gonna? Ta- what's it gonna take to stop this? When's it gonna stop?" And I went burning them alive at the stake and live streaming it until people understand there's going to be consequences. They're going to still do that. I got banned immediately. And you know what I had to do to get unbanned? What? Delete the tweet. How about you just delete the tweet? We don't even have this conversation because I then went back and forth with them and said, so I can watch a video of someone getting murdered. But when I say those people deserve the death penalty, I'm the bad guy. And I go 1000% disagree. And then they wrote back, this is an unmonitored, after going back and forth with me, this is an unmonitored email. If you have any other questions, here's the FAQs. And I was like, fuck you. And I got out of it. But anyway, that's that. Uh, you can find Big Vito Brand, or Big Vito Brand. You can find Big Vito and Noel at bigvitobrand.wixsite.com, patreon.com backslash the Big Vito Brand. And also, you can watch the early release of the reflection videos at twitch.tv backslash the Big Vito Brand. Yeah, you can watch it there because the A-Track Brown, that slow motherfucker, hasn't uploaded any of my videos. But anyway, neither here nor there. <laughs> but you can follow me on my excerpt at PWSO PROF. That's, that's PWSO Prof. You can follow my fellows, my brothers in arms on the YouTubes, on the PWSO Networks. Follow Billy Ray Valentine, the host of the Wednesday the Locker Room, at ob one You Know Me. And, of course, the king of the reactions, 8-Track Brown at the number 8, T-R-A-C Brown. And I did a professor's perspective on the PWSO TikTok page. So check that out. So, you know, I'm getting my feet wet a little bit, TW. Uh, again, it took a lot, took a long time. I love the Chinese government, but, you know, I never went on TikTok. I don't like TikTok. So, you know, maybe I'll start dancing. Maybe I'll do some moves, but I'll do the perspective dance, uh, you know, subjects, whatever. But I'm trying, you know. Give electric me a little time. Boogaloo. Breaking two. Electric Boogaloo. I'll, I'll do a breaking two electric Boogaloo perspective. But again, we're on the PWS so TikTok. But neither here nor there and like i said in two weeks maybe if i'm in a good mood ray i'll give you that episode that you've been clamoring for for months but with that being said i'm the professor that's mr wonderful dum dum new way it's on the iron stomach one the conservative liberal the liberal conservative the tommy one is saying good night and we'll see you in dos weeks for another edition of the pwr podcast at the homie media group at podbeam.com peace Flex with Lex. When they say that in, in the I night? think I had a shirt that said that. Oh, okay, that was a shirt. Okay.